Hey everybody, in this video uh, we're going to go over what a function is, what a quadratic function is, and properties of the quadratic function. So first of all, a quick review. A function you can sort of think of as a black box that takes x values and outputs y values. And in this case, the function that we're looking at is the function f of x is x squared. This is our basic quadratic function. So the way we're going to set this up is we're going to set up what's called a t-chart. This is a really good idea, a good thing to do anytime you've got some new function you don't know the properties of, to investigate and figure out what this x squared thing actually looks like. And our x values are going to uh, map through our function. Our function is going to give us y values. And in this case, our function is going to be the x squared function. If you've got a new function you aren't familiar with, generally it's a good idea to do 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and then maybe a fraction value as well. So you can figure out what happens really close to your x-axis. So 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. So those are two points that are going to be output by our function. Taking the x value 0, our function is square that value, and it gives us 0 squared. Put in 1, you square that value, you get out 1. Put in 2, 2 is our input, you square it as your function, and you get 4. And then 3 squared is 9. And so those give us our first points of our function. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Uh, 4, 8, 9, there we go. Now the left side of this function, we've got negative 1 squared. Now keep in mind the negative 1 is being squared, so there's actually two negative signs there. So it's positive 1, uh, negative 2 squared is positive 4, and negative 3 squared is positive 9. So our left-hand side is symmetrical to our right-hand side. Now, why do we have this half point here? I want to know how this function looks as it gets close to the x-axis, as it gets close to this middle point here. Is it going to go down to a point and go up sharply, or is it going to go down to a nice, even, smooth, uh, flat-bottomed curve? And so, I didn't leave myself much room, but half squared is a quarter, and one half, negative a half squared is also one quarter. So that gives us a point half a box over, a quarter box up, half a box over, a quarter box up. Oops. There we go. And if we connect all of these points, we can see our basic quadratic function. And from this function, we can actually see a lot of our properties of quadratics in general. This point down here at the very bottom of the function is called the vertex. And so every quadratic is going to have a point right in the middle at the bottom of the curve, or if it's upside down at the top of the curve, we'll get to that in a second, and that point in the middle is called the vertex. We also noticed that this function was symmetrical. So this dotted line down the middle, x equals 0, is the axis of symmetry. Another thing we can notice about this quadratic is that it opens up. And it has, in this case, it's got one x-intercept and one y-intercept, which happens to be the vertex. Not very exciting in this case. So we're going to look at how to actually create these functions in different shapes going forward. But for now, let's just sketch a few different possibilities. If this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis, you could get several different shapes of functions. You could get a quadratic that looks something like this. So in this case, this quadratic has a y-intercept there. It has two x-intercepts. The point in the middle is always called the vertex. The dotted line that goes down the middle is sort of the line of symmetry. This is the axis of symmetry. And this parabola opens 
up. So as we saw in our first example, this quadratic had one x-intercept. This quadratic had two x-intercepts. Is it possible to have an x uh, quadratic with no x-intercepts? And sure enough, we can. All that we need to do is get a quadratic that opens up above the x-axis or a quadratic that opens down below the x-axis. Now this is sort of a sloppily drawn parabola because that's perfectly vertical. And a parabola will actually never be perfectly vertical. We're going to talk about that when we get to domain and range, but technically all quadratics have y-intercept. If I could scroll up high enough, up off the top of this uh, graph, you would see that eventually this quadratic will hit our y-intercept, or y-axis, giving us a y-intercept. Every parabola will always have a vertex. Every parabola will always have an axis of symmetry. They will always have a direction of opening. But for x-intercepts, you can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. One other thing, I just realized I threw the word parabola out there. The shape, this, this shape of graph is called a parabola. So the function is a quadratic function, and the shape of a quadratic function is a parabola. And those are the properties of quadratic functions.